All right, all right, all right. Welcome back to the Black Print. J5 in the building. MC, what's going on, brother? Not much. What's going on, fellas? <laughs> Nothing much. Reporting live from hell. Uh, Apparently. Me, me and me and, uh, me and and Mark live in the damn set from, from Dune. <laughs> uh, it's, it's just pure hell. Uh, heat, sand, all this shit, and they, they still got to go to work. But we got a special guest today in the building. Uh, I mean, he's been on here so many times. I don't, you know, we don't even need to introduce him. But we got Cambo <laughs> five hundred, Cameron Hay on the pod this week. What's going on, Cam? What's good, family man? Happy to be back on another episode. Yeah, we we uh we had to we had to bring you back when Josh gone, so that we didn't get you guys arguing and debating too much. <laughs> Cam seen the debates? They're not bad debate. They're not bad debates. Bad arguments. I thought I was getting tagged. I thought reinforcements were getting called today. <laughs> like, in, like in May? May was definitely we need reinforcements. Thanks. Oh, my God. Well, you know, I, well, just glad that you're here. Fuck, fuck all of that. As we, as, what, what, what is the weather out, out there in uh, St. Louis right now? Bro, it's like today is that has like 91. It's been it's, scorching hot. It's going to get in the 70s this weekend. It's supposed to cool back off. But... Like, this week has been high. It's weird, bro. Like, St. Louis is weird where right before the summer ends and going into fall, it's scorching hot, bro. Like, That's how it is here. That's how it is here. I war- I, rem- I remember warning Mark. I remember Mark, Mark, like, a couple months ago, he was like, yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty hot. It's manageable. And I'm like, bro, it ain't. It's nah. not. It's not It's not September, October yet. And now you're really starting to feel it out here, the September, October heat. Yeah. And, and L.A. And, 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 you know, California is real. We, it's 110 degrees right now. Well, Shit, yeah. 10. It, when I looked, I, I seen I seen the 112, then I seen the 117. So I'm just like, okay, what's going on, bro? Only <laughs> lead a house. We, what are we doing, bro? I walked. I walked outside to take my dogs out, and it felt like I was in a microwave. It felt like I was literally just spinning. A piece of meat in the microwave, bro. bro. This shit is this shit's ridiculous, man. It's crazy. I was at the car. I was at the dealership yesterday or two days ago. I had to go up there to drop off a key to drop off one of my keys, and it was like ninety six. And I was just, I literally was standing outside for like five minutes, and my shirt was damn near drenched. The back of my shirt was, bro. Like it's like crazy. That's what I don't miss about Florida. That's one thousand percent what I don't miss. If this was one seventeen plus humidity, just know yes. we would probably not be doing a pod today. I would be <laughs> full AC, blinds closed, <laughs> doing something, binging That's shows. Okay. I would definitely not be doing any type of recording. But it's a little bit different out here, so I'm good. Listen, listen to the rich talk coming from. Oh my God, Cam. <laughs> Oh, from Cam. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, no. yeah, yeah. Look, 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 look at Mark pouring that yeah, a soul. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, a, hit, a hit dog <laughs> and hola every time. <laughs> I was like, rich talk. I don't even. I, I haven't even talked to any rich talk. A hit, a hit dog is gonna holla every time. Look at this motherfucker. He said, "Who me? Huh? No, I'm talking about <laughs> Cam this time, uh, Mark. God damn. Congratulations, sure. congratulations to you, Cam. I saw you bought your own car. Like, you know what I'm saying? How, how, how's that? How was that process for you? You're, you're a young dude. So, like. One of the biggest like surprises in my life or kind of like flex moments in my life was when they said at the dealership, I went to go get a BMW and they said, well, you know, let me preemptively. Look at this. I'm about to say, yeah. <laughs> need to fucking drive. I'll do that. I'll do that for myself. And oh, they said, yo, you know, you can just you can just leave. You can walk off the lot with it. You know what I'm saying? And I was just like, really? I like I was like, fuck, for real? Like, you know, there's nothing like getting your 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 first, you know, what I'm saying, car on your own in your own name. Like, what what was that like for you? Because you work, you you know, you you've done a lot of work, Cam. You've been at Complex for some years. And now you're over Up Rocks. You're running social over there. Like that was that like a gift for yourself? You were just like, I gotta I gotta treat myself. It was it was a little bit of both. So you like I was driving. The car I had, the lease was was coming up, yeah. And so I had been looking for a couple, you know, for like a couple months on what my options I wanted to weigh for going forward for my next car. And you know, I reached out to you, you know, got your advice, you know, because you had to, like you said, you got the BMW. All right, you, all right. We're gonna chill. We're gonna know, chill. I ain't gonna put the color out there, anything. You know, people <laughs> listen. You know, they might, it might try make to it model. Exactly. I ain't gonna put anything out there, but you know, I, I came to you for some advice, and. You know, like it made sense for me. Like I, I could do it. It was, I was at a point now where, like, you know, I could make this purchase, and it was a responsible purchase. It wasn't an irresponsible purchase. Like, yeah. I mapped out everything. Like, 
the credit was where it was supposed to be at. Like, put the money down. Like, and it was it, that. That was the story. And so, yeah, uh, yeah man, like, it was crazy. It was a great feeling. It was a great feeling. I'm not gonna lie. It was. A, I, I felt like a man that day. Like, I, I really, I, was, I had my chest out. Like, <laughs> <laughs> standing up, standing yeah. up like this. I, I, I need you to. Like drive me around now. I think that's really what. Oh what yeah, I owe you for sure. I definitely owe you. I owe you. Owe years, you. three years. <laughs> Before Part I got of, my own car out in LA. Of driving, oh. driving Cam around, taking yeah. him everywhere. There was nothing prouder than than when Cam did his driving test, and I saw him drive off the parking lot, and I said, "I hope he passes." And then he came back; he didn't pass it. <laughs> that, was was no, that no, reason too? Was that reason no, too? That was test? like that was like twenty twenty one. That was like twenty twenty one. So I had to get so. I had to get a whole new license. I had to take a whole, the whole test over again because I moved to LA, California, and my Missouri shit was expired. So like I had to take the test over. So I had went out there, bro. First time J Fox took me to a dealership. It was out in Long Beach. I mean, not dealership, DMV in Long Beach. Took the test. I think I got off the lot, like bro. Like I'm driving like I like it's regular driving, like not actually abiding by <laughs> necessarily the the driver's test rules. Mm. And I think. I think I forgot to like put my <laughs> my blinker on to turn, you can say, turn around. <laughs> and yeah, literally the the instructor was literally like, "Yo, turn around, you failed." Like literally, <laughs> literally, like didn't even get around the corner. What was that? Thirty I, seconds? It was dead as like a minute, bro. Like <laughs> it, was dead as, it was not. It was not long. Like, Wait, Mark. Like, like you had to go to DMV too this week too, Mark, right? Yeah, I've actually I actually feel closer to a real California. I'm not driving hot anymore. Thank God. <laughs> I feel good about that. And you know the California, so the DMV at Cal in California, like it's like it's packed. Like in yeah. LA, Long Beach, like it's not like like here in St. Louis, it'd be a little busy, but you can get in and get out. It's like it's not an all day type thing. Like hmm. remember, I had to hit J five up. Like yo, are you gonna be free this day to take me? Because like that's how <laughs> that's how busy it is, bro. So like I literally drove off the lot, start the test, everything, boom, turn out right. I didn't put my blinker on it until like I started turning. I realized I made a mistake and he was like, Phil. It was like yeah. an old it was an older guy. He was a little bit of a jackass, a little bit, but like well, what yeah. what what was crazy was that you were using my wife's old car. Yeah. yeah. yeah it was it was my Jeep, so it was a bigger car. So I was like, Can you drive a bigger car, bro? Like I if I, I never felt more like a parent. I'm just like <laughs> 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 and so I think what I have to wait like a week later or something to come yeah. back. It was something yeah. like no, that. So it was like two days. It was like two, yeah, days. It was like two days. It was like two yeah. days. And so I went back out to to J Five crib. Like went out to Long Beach. She took me to the to the to the um, DMV again. I had a, a a much more lenient and cooler instructor the second time, and like I passed it. It was easy. It was I, was, I probably drove like five minutes. Like I drove down the block, turn park parallel park and he was he was on the phone with his with i think his wife the whole time not a lot of he, he damn near wasn't even really paying attention i was i had to basically crash the car to not pass with this guy as my <laughs> like, like he was just like yo all right go back to the lot you good he was like no turn signal live fuck it yeah, he's like bro you we good. go in take the picture got my license and i think right after that literally the next day or like two days later that's when i went and got my first car you know like, yeah I didn't have a car in LA when I first got out there. Oh, yeah. oh, I know. I know. Yeah, J Five was a. He was. He was basically having to get me from point A to point B if I wasn't using Uber. <laughs> yeah, but me and Drew, bro. You owe yeah. so many. You owe so many. So many trips. Thanks. You owe, but Thanks. you know, anytime you do something good, I love to see it. I love to see you excelling and and, and doing right. And you know, makes me makes me proud. But. <laughs> Let's get into the show here. It's been a minute since we since we've done uh, Black Print. Obviously, if you guys watched or listened to Overly Conversating, me and Mark talked about it. You know, Josh is taking a little bit of a break from the show for a couple of weeks. Uh, he'll be back very very soon. Um, obviously, we talk to Josh every day. He's fine, but um, he's he's just doing a little bit of work stuff right now. And uh, we do have an episode of Throw Blacks with uh, Kanye West late registration uh, that is already out. Overly Conversating with myself and Mark is already out including this episode so you guys are, are heavily 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 eating right now and i got a special episode coming up in the next couple of days uh with myself mark and our good friend cyrus so we're gonna be doing some some cool stuff there too um what you smiling for cam cyrus my god i haven't 
Like, I haven't talked, like, bro, it's like, bro, I haven't seen him in a minute. So it's just funny. Like, you know how Cyrus is, bro. Like, you know, like, so I just laugh. Cam and Cyrus, so Mike, but actually, have we ever had a Cam and Cyrus 1v1? Well, not 1v1, but, uh, but, uh, but oh, a show between the both of y'all. We've seen the Cam and Cyrus 1v1 uh, <laughs> on the, in the chat before. In the chat. That's my guy, though, man. I, I rock with Cyrus, bro. But, no, nah, we've never been on a pod together before. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, we're we're gonna have that coming up, and um, yeah, you you can expect us to do Throw Blacks the tour. I was going to have a guest on that episode. The guest that I was gonna have was intimately close to it, and I think literally that, and figuratively. Yeah, my my guy Alex, uh, and you know, after the events of this week. I'm I'm just not even gonna ask. You know what I mean? I'm I'm just gonna keep it to us. Um, you know, he had been going back and forth with it. Just to just full disclosure, like he was just like, I he's not really and even before, you know, what we're gonna talk about in a second, he was kinda iffy on talking about it. And now I think he's probably even more iffy on talking about that time in that period. Um, so completely understand. We're still gonna do, we're still gonna run the show like it is. Um so Rich Gang, the tour is gonna be a super special episode we're gonna do this month. So stay tuned for that. But you know. I would be remiss to talk about this <laughs> and announce this without talking about the passing of Rich Homie Kwan. Uh, it's been 24 hours as we record this that we learned this news. Um, it came out of an unlikely source, Thugger Daily, who which we've talked about on Black Print many, many times. Uh, he's, this person does all the reporting for uh, Young Thug's court case, has been the foremost, uh, you know, he's got actual, have you guys seen his comments? He has actual lawyers and legisl- legislators in his comments saying this is like a, a, a miscarriage of justice and all this other shit. Like Thugger Daily is actually a huge deal right now in the legal community, especially in Georgia, of all these people looking at the Thug case. But he announced it. He's saying, he said uh, something to the effect of like, I heard young, you know, Rich Homie Kwan passed away last night. Then he posted a picture of one of his uh, homeboys saying, listen, th- and, and let me be clear, man. If, if someone ever hits you up and say, is it true that Justin died? Don't respond with bad pill. All right. Like, like don't respond with yup, bad pill. That's crazy. Like, make make if you're gonna say something, just be like, yo, let me call you. Let me, you know what I'm saying? Like, that screenshot's gonna live in infamy. And he has not deleted that. I think that's the one thing he's ever done. I'm just kinda like, you should probably delete that that post. It's kind of wild. Yeah, the dude probably was not looking at it from a sense of, okay, I know this is gonna get uh aggregated through multiple different accounts, and I'm gonna be labeled as the close the close family member of rich homie kwan he probably wasn't even thinking about that thugger daily is probably somebody that he has uh numerous conversations with as you said he's probably helped a lot of changes in this atlanta case going on right now with all the bullshit that's been going on in that case but you know this ends up being uh, a much more uh uh much different situation serious situation like this is this is literally somebody's life and i mean what can we say about rich homie kwan that that encapsulates what it is i mean not not even just just someone who at the time in 2013 was one of the biggest rappers in the world undisputedly like out of nowhere independently my type of way they was playing the college games right Cam? he was playing it everywhere michigan state head coach mike d'antonio and everything when he was the head coach of michigan state football he, the team was in the locker room hitting it like dancing and everything so he, he was do that was he was the guy yeah. <laughs> rich homie Kwan was at one point man he was the guy yeah like He's everywhere again right out of atlanta he kind of like i mean just from look from the style of rapping all of that stuff he ushered in a lot of things and again this is pre-thug like thug kind of was still very much under underground <laughs> at the time when rich homie kwan was starting to break through in 2013. For 2013 period was a was a moment that made me i was in atlanta a lot Mm-hmm. <laughs> around that time i was seeing a lot of this stuff happen you know in the moment you know i was going to go see my guy ty you know i was dating somebody that that lived close to there so i was always going there and, and you know the rich homie kwan movement was not a fucking game i i literally i've interviewed him but i also when i was in atlanta saw him at linux with <laughs> with like 12 different niggas just walking through linux <laughs> you know what i'm saying buying shit you know what i mean like and people were rushing to go see him you know what i mean mm-hmm. like it was it was it was a, he was a movement you know what i mean and Music wise, where where do we even start, bro? Like differences, type of way, blah blah blah. One of my favorite songs from him, Man of the Year. One of my favorite songs from him. Uh, I mean, we're not even getting into rich gang shit. He had a bunch of shit. Walk through, walk yep. through. You couldn't go nowhere without hearing walk through back in the I day. I know. <laughs> like for real, man. Like walk through was is was one of those ones, and I think what what hurts me the most 
about Rich Homie is that I think that before yesterday, there was there was a lack of respect on his name. And I think I think a lot of us are guilty of when someone kind of fall, falls off and we'll, we'll quote that like falls off or I'll say like probably just isn't a focal point anymore. Hmm. They, they, you know, we, we tend to say that like they were good for one moment. And they were never good. You know what I mean? And and good for one one era and, and they were never good. Like Rich Homie had a, a good three, four year run, which is more than what a lot of people can say. And when that run was over, you know, it, it you know, it, it sucked that not a lot of people kind of paid attention to what he was doing. I mean, a, a lot of it was the thug kind of leapfrogged him, right? not even kind of, but did. But the, the, the dissolution of Rich Gang really kind of set set that in motion of, of where of where Quan was going to go. And look at all the friends that he had in that new Atlanta. I think of him, literally everybody from QC, Migos, Rich the Kid, obviously Thug as well, uh, PB Longway, who also had rumors on his name throughout the past couple of days. Um, well, actually, throughout the past 24 hours, I should say, on something health related. He's already debunked that. That's done. But uh, yeah, I think the highs were really high to a point for Rich Homie Kong where when you have not necessarily a post uh, a post career, but post everything that happened with, you know, linking up with everybody from Migos, Rich the Kid, Long Way, um, everybody else that was in QC, Thug, to what he was doing now that was a little bit separate outside of that, Riches and Spirit, the other albums that he dropped recently, you know, it's it's difficult to try and compare what you were doing currently, especially as a as a as a much different artist and a much different space and a much different headspace. He's a little bit more sober than he was within those few years or so. And comparing those highs and those lows ended up being really difficult. But, you know, with moments like this, and it's unfortunate that a lot of different deaths have sparked this conversation. I try not to get into the headspace of, OK, what was I thinking of him two weeks ago? What was I thinking of him a month ago? And trying to make that what I should always keep in my mindset of how I felt about Rich Homie Quan. Because there was a lot of fun. I think when most people think about Quan, they think of how much fun they were fucking having yeah. in that 2013, 2014 moment. And having those moments on your career is just as, if not even more important than having eight years of a solid uh, discography. Having those yeah. moments mean more to me. Yeah, because I mean, and we'll get into this <clears throat> as well. It's like, not many people can run for 10 plus years, yeah. <laughs> especially like hip hop isn't old enough to have had that type of sustained run. So when people are able to do that, like that's a pretty big deal. So like for Quan to come through and Atlanta was a fucking supernova, you know, at that point. And, mm -hmm. you know, from that 20 shit, where, where, would, where would we say Atlanta's run started? 2005 with Lil John? Before that, probably 02, probably 02 maybe. Kings of Crunk right. was 02? Yeah, I'd probably say. When Kings of Crunk came out, I was like, oh, fuck. I would love to be in Atlanta right now. So I'd say like 02. Yeah, like that. from that period, Atlanta kept reinventing itself. And Quan was at the forefront of that reinvention. Obviously, we had Future, but he was a, he was like three years before that already. Yep. Um, then we, you know, we were getting Thug. We were getting Migos at the time. That was, you know, they had come out at that point. And it was Migos, Rich Homie, and, and Thug. That was the core and what hurts me the most, Quavo put up a post on Instagram. And I was really annoyed by this post because he had a picture of all five of those gentlemen. And he had, you know, uh, a, like an angel or something or a dove over, over takeoff. And he had, he had the rocket. He had the rocket over takeoff. He had a rocket over takeoff, a dove over Quan, and a heartbreak over, awesome. uh, over offset. Nothing over Thug because. I don't know. There's not a. I think, he had the, I think he had the links. He had the chain link. He had the chain links. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, and I was like, okay, man, the heartbreak. Listen, y'all are the last two of these of these dudes that are not dead or in jail. One of y'all, one of y'all is is on tour. He's a father, and you know he's doing positive things. And Quavo, you're doing positive things, so you're still able to put out music. Squash this shit. Like I was really annoyed by that post. Did you see that shit, Cam? I was annoyed too. I'm with you. Like. <clears throat> I don't think that it was, I think Quavo heart was in the right place, but it was just like offset is here. You can call him. Like, yeah. <laughs> it shouldn't, it like, like realistically, you can call him. Like, we, we all know that you guys' relationship hasn't been what it once was. But like I said, when you put the heartbreak emoji over him, like, we understood what it meant for takeoff. We understood what it meant for Quan. We all are well aware of what Young Thug is going through right now. Like, I don't think it was necessary for you to put the heartbreak over him. And like he said, like what it, it came out like a couple hours later, yeah. got on the phone with my brother, like we locked in, like 
That's all it took, bro. Like, you didn't have to do that. Like, just call him. He's here. He's, he's the only person here you can talk to whenever you want. Right. Make it right. Yeah, I mean, that's on both of y'all. It's not just on you, Quavo. It's, it's on Offset, too. It's on both of you guys. Like, make it right. Like, it don't have to be this way. And I, and I think what, like, is the most annoying about the whole thing is that, like, like you said, like, he's still alive. He's still there. And I think they should, like, it should not take two. To me, to me, I, we don't know what's going on with it between those two. But it's been like a little cold war. They've been on again, off again, whatever. They they did a performance last year for for takeoff or whatever. Mm-hmm. But I think for me, like, my whole thing is, if y'all see, like, it shouldn't take two deaths like this. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Like, you guys were the fucking pillars of the new Atlanta. It was the pillars. All y'all came up with, except for Quan, really. Well, all y'all came up under Gucci. All y- like all y'all did all of this stuff before, and I just felt like. I'm glad that they squashed it for sure. I'm glad that the the Quavo and them are are they're okay now. But I just thought that that post was like such bad taste, yo. I was just like, what? What? Are you, why are you doing that, bro? Like, I mean, shit, even even Quan has a tape. Even Quan even Quan has a tape with Gucci. Classic title. Trust God. Fuck twelve. <laughs> Gucci's a, lo- a lot of the uh, Gucci's a lot of the imprint in between a lot of a, a lot of things that were going on in 2013, 2014. But right. I think about Gucci too. I'm like, how does he feel seeing a bunch of his little homies passing away or going to jail or you know, and and I know that even if Thug and, and Quan weren't really on speaking terms, it's gotta it's gotta hit them hard knowing that Key passed, um, uh, trouble passed away as he as he's been as he's been gone. Yeah. Um, now Takeoff passed away and he's been gone. Now Quan's passed away and he's been gone. Like a lot of those people that helped set the table are not there anymore, and I think that's just so tragic that such a <clears throat> ex- like extremely creative and fun and fucking like i said earlier this that, that era made us you know what i'm saying a lot like what like we're gonna get into a, a project that just got re-released that was that era all of those guys are on that project and they're all they're, they're damn near all gone like that shit it, it's not like i was telling um i tell i was telling my boy today i was like this is like this is like seeing notorious big die three times you know what i'm saying like this is like seeing tupac die like I, i'm not trying to you know obviously tupac them as far as artistry yeah, but I'm saying like like you're seeing you're seeing people that change the game. You know, yeah, what that's I mean? the impact they had on us though. Like we we were young. I mean, I'm younger than you guys, but like of yeah. course we're not saying Rich Homie is Tupac. We're like yeah. we're people listening, but like you just said, bro, that that made you like think yeah. about where you were in the the time period in your life. Like I know where I was at, and the time period was in my life when all of that all of those artists were taking yeah. over, bro. Like so, it is kind of our that's our type of relationship with them. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we see, we saw these guys come up. We like, I remember yeah. rich homie was still, they were still wearing them weird ass Versace shirts and the weird the Versace <laughs> chains. And then they got real chains. You know what I'm saying? Like we saw all of these guys come up. We saw a thug with the little rich gang chain and he got better, you know what I'm saying? And he got better chains. And like, yeah. we, we seen all of them come up and I mean, you know, I'd be remiss to even say this is the tour is one of the greatest mixtapes of the past decade. You know what I mean? Like, it, and that part pisses me off the most. And I said this on Twitter: you cannot stream this album legally right now. And I don't know what it would take to get this project put out there. I don't even know who owns it. I don't even know where you would even start <laughs> with this whole project because, and I don't even want to think about it because it just it, it blurs the mind because there's so many <laughs> there are so many hands in the pockets of everybody at that point. Mm-hmm. But like, the fact that you that a lot of people will never get to hear. Some of Rich Homie's best work ever is really heartbreaking to me. Like that's the most heartbreaking part to me uh, is that this mixtape is trapped on live mixtapes. And of all the mixtapes we've ever had, you know, we'll talk about a couple of the, that we want to see come out again. That's the one that I feel like everyone needs to needs to hear right now. And you really can't. And I think the the most important thing in the past two weeks is having that representation on DSPs. I know the real comfortable thing for people to do is be like, well, all I got to do is hop on SoundCloud and just download the playlist. But as you see from days before rodeo, we can exclude the sales at least. But look at the 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 ability that people have had to now not only tap into an album that they might not have heard for a long time. Some people have heard it for the first time. Some people are hearing brand new records. They're able to playlist it. Now it's on Instagram, so now you could use it for Instagram. You could use it for any other socials. Uh, if Travis drops instrumentals, you could use those. Although it's really easy for people to say, well, I've had it uploaded to Apple Music for years. I'm good. I don't have to have the, have the tour. It's so important to be able to 
be able to be represented on billboard like this for a specific mixtape, but also the amount of different things that are now unlocked that you could use the tour for if the tour was available on DSP. But like Five said, unless you're looking for a secret version called Rich Homie Thuggin' and it's up on Spotify or some way yeah. like that, there's no way you can listen to it. In no, like, like J5 said, like, and like you're saying, I, I think beyond that, I, it always annoys me when people are like, oh, I've had this tape on my Apple or iTunes for X amount of years. I think it's beyond just us. I think J5 just touched on it. There's a generation of hip hop fans and listeners whose only way to listen to music that they've experienced has been through streaming. Yep. Yeah. Like, these type of historic or class, these are classics for us. Like, once again, this isn't like the tour is a classic project that when you think of 2014, you can't talk about the year in hip hop without talking about that project. Whether it's it, albums, mixtapes, anything. Yeah, it's the tour and Monster. You know exactly. What I mean? It's the tour, like a month apart. A yeah. Month- fucking part bro like that's where we were living we can't even get a tour and a monster oh, <laughs> a tour and a monster today <laughs> yeah, like, we can't even do that today that's what you know I'm what I'm saying? like that, that's the that's the crazy part about this whole thing and yeah uh, someone said to me on on twitter too like well you know you could just go to live mixtapes i'm like i would and i think one thing we're missing is that i i would like to listen to this in a format in a way where the people that worked on it can get paid finally yeah mm-hmm. where where kwan's family can get paid for this because this comes out it's shooting to the top of his Spotify, whatever, whatever, like it's gonna shoot to the top of his most played songs. Freestyle, Milk Marie, you could not listen to Milk Marie on streaming, bro. <laughs> like you can't listen to Flavor on streaming. You can't listen to Hate Eye on streaming. Like there's so many solo songs on that on that mixtape that you you can't listen to anymore. I, I think um I think Paul Thompson, he's a he's a music reviewer. He calls it he calls them like the outcast, Quan and, and Thug, the outcast yeah, of, of that of generation. Party. I think so. I would agree. I would agree. And and we lost a huge pillar of Atlanta rap and you know, we'll never be able to get that back and it's it's just it's just depressing to see so many leaves fall off that tree, so to speak. You know, they, they, it just it just really is sad. So, rest in peace to Rich Homie Kwan. Uh, we're going to be talking about him a lot more this month uh on the tour and we're going to do it in a celebratory way cuz he has some funny fucking lines on the tour and we're going to get to all of those. <laughs> When we get into throw blacks this month, because I think by far he is the funniest nigga on that mixtape, and we're gonna <laughs> we are going to get to that uh, when we when we review it or we look back at it this month. So um, yeah, just shout out to everyone and prayers up to his his, his children, his family, everywhere this morning right now. Um, I'm, I'm going to listen to to his mixtapes in his honor uh, all weekend. But we who weren't we given a briefly. Who are we giving credit for the fade? On the grow out, are we giving it to Duke men's basketball team or are we giving it to Quan? Well, the homie yesterday Quan. said Rich Homie Quan started it. Quan. <laughs> started it, okay. Quan, I had the Rich Homie Quan at one point. Everyone <laughs> had the Rich Homie Quan, bro. Thanks. Everybody had the Rich Homie Quan. That, that was the hairstyle. That Waves was undefeated <laughs> before that. Yeah, yeah like bro, the, it, but it was box phase. Then it turned into Rich Homie Quan. Like yeah. box phase, it come back for like 2012, 2013. Then it went into Rich Homie Kwan 2014. Everyone had the the uh, the soft brush, the soft brush. Like everyone, <laughs> that. yes, bro. And the thing is, that's still a hairstyle that is fucking dope today. Like you can still like like it like the the Rich Homie is still a, a dope hairstyle because because again, like it, it brings it like it's so southern. You know what I'm saying? Like just like the Boosie Fade is. There yeah. was people that had that hairstyle forever in the South. Rich Homie Kwan made it popping because he blew up with the fucking hairstyle. It had already been growing out there. And then he came out with it. So shout out to the the the, the, the rich homie Quan cut. I don't know what we call it, the fade, whatever it is. That, damn, you gotta even think about the ooh ooh ooh, the dance he did for ooh. ooh, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> hitting the, hitting the, hitting the, you, you got a whole record named after you, man. I think that legacy is, is very important. Yes, but that nigga who said I, I love rich homie Quan songs. Uh, hit the Quan. <laughs> <laughs> the community know rich homie Quan didn't make hit the Quan. You fucking idiot. <laughs> You community knows me and say fucking idiot. I hope I'm they the, give notes. Nah, I'm deleting my account. I get community <laughs> noted like <laughs> it's time to yeah. My uh my Atlanta haircut was a little bit different. I had the Travis Porter. I had the faux hawk in 09. So the 09? I see. Oh, the Please send a picture. Please. I seen the faux hawk. You I've seen, seen the faux hawk? I'm trying to remember. Where would I have the faux? I gotta I gotta look that up for you, Kay. I'm trying to think. Where would I have that photo of the faux hawk? But Travis Porter was, I mean, there's so many different, so many different eras of Atlanta. 
that I yeah. that, that, that I think of that are always so respected and so appreciated. You talk about 02, just the 05, when you start getting Jeezy and Gucci, then you start looking at the late 2000s and start looking at the black boy, white boy era between all that. Then Future comes out. Then you start getting the fashion, the fashion era, the high fashion era of Atlanta. And then you get the new Atlanta between me. This is, this is so, there's just so much history in Atlanta. Damn they near need, jealous at this point. They need to make a movie out of it because I don't know. I, I, I don't even want to say it, bro, because I, I want to reserve. I want to reserve my thoughts for like after this thug shit happens. But like it really scares me to think that we might be coming to the end of that era. You know what I'm saying? Like it, it yeah. really like that's that's a strong almost 20 year run that yeah. they had. And it, I, I don't see it. It's not happening right now. You know what I mean? Like it's it's very much not happening right now, and I, I think that's the that's the sucky part about this whole thing. But um, we weren't here a couple weeks ago, or we weren't we hadn't recorded around this. But we, we I want to talk about this this uh, the we talking about the fall of, of things. Let's talk about the fall of uh, Concrete Boys. <laughs> Rest in peace. Where's my lighter? I don't got my lighter on me. <laughs> <laughs> as a as a it's us volume one truther what i'm a little bit i was a little bit upset was who was facts R- really you guys for real hey man you, I, I like sometimes sometimes, sometimes like the proof is in the pudding man sometimes the proof is in the pudding i waited a while for it's us volume one was not disappointed and it lasted what two months two months or so? many songs i kept from that project I, I think i kept a decent amount i still spent a couple i kept I kept seven songs. That's yeah, man. for like, for Yachty project for not even a Yachty project for Yachty and the Henchmen. That's pretty good, bro. Like, <laughs> <laughs> just play not the two and nod your head real quick. Just bro, like, I'm saying, like L.A. Reed. Like, you can't tell me L.A. Reed not hard. You niggas listening to Camo. Yeah, I'm out. <laughs> Camo had a good intro. Was it him on the intro? I don't even remember if it was him on the intro. So like, Yachty goes on. I mean, everyone knows this. He goes on. He he crashes out. Essentially, that's the that's the new term for everything. He crashes out. He says, "I wrote your, sh- I wrote your shit, Caribou." Because allegedly, she told a worker at Red Lobster, "Did that? Was that ever debunked?" <laughs> it wasn't. It was not proven. Back to Red Lobster. The Red Lobster. She was getting the cheddar, but the cheddar bay biscuits. And <laughs> hey, you turned up. You turned up off them damn Long Islands. You're gonna be like, "Let me tell you about this fun nigga Yachty." And then that's yeah. how it, that's how it starts. This nigga bully. Fuck this nigga, man. <laughs> He put me in these bullshit ad, bullshit ad camos. I was going to some regular shit. He said he dressed you niggas. He said I made you niggas. He said I created you niggas. All <laughs> right, no, I know you're not Drewski in that. <laughs> I just got to think about is it cap or not. Just think about it. It's it's sad to see because I mean again we talk about the fall of like Atlanta dynasties, like mm. but like what we've seen. And I, while I don't think necessarily Yachty was on the verge of creating a new one. <laughs> Sure. Just, you left. <laughs> I can agree just, with that at least. That's just that's just ridiculous to even say. Well, I don't agree that he was starting a new one. I did think that these kids had something going for him. I don't know. How, I don't know what like what was the allure behind the concrete boys? Was it the, was it really just the clothes, the 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 all over print, the jean, Nike concrete boy fit, the the chain? Was it that really what it was? I, I think just having the SoundCloud shit was something that was uh, not necessarily having the SoundCloud shit, but more so representing that era of just let's just throw some shit up online with a sample that can't get cleared rap over it sound nice see how it goes and it ended up getting a good ended up getting a good amount of attention obviously you had to change that up once you're putting out a retail album but that was what drew me that was what drew me to them because outside that of that they were just that. numerous artists that album wasn't retail that one was streaming that one was not retail. <laughs> ah well yeah i guess that makes sense that one gotta, not re- <laughs> Nobody actually bought it. Nobody yeah, actually bought it. Like, <laughs> let, let me go look on Apple Music, iTunes, to see if I can purchase Concrete Boys Volume One. Ain't, hey, you talked about not the two. Ain't gonna be no two with this shit, bro. You want the vinyl, bro? It ain't the one either, nor the two, <laughs> nor the three, bro. It ain't gonna be none of that. But what, 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 what's our, what's our thoughts on like on on just the dissolution of this this whole crew? Like, is, is this like a I don't think of it as as much of a, a fumble as like a lot of people do. I'm just like, yeah, like Yachty kind of does this all the time, and then he's back with a, with another thing the next week. I mean, my thing is like, was anybody? Are you shocked to find out that Yachty wrote Caribou's raps? Like when people is <laughs> like, 
Like, and then her her trying to debunk it was crazy. She tried to say, put it on your mama that you didn't write this song. But then the other two, she didn't deny it. And the one song that she the one song that she said he didn't write sounds exactly like the other two. Like, come on, like what are we doing here? Like, you think he was lying or do you think she's like she's like telling the truth here? I think he wrote everything for her. I, I bro, it sound it was too much pain in Yachty voice for me to think he was lying. Like <laughs> He was legit about to cry. It was his birthday. He was outside in New York walking around aimlessly about to cry. Like, like there's no reason to believe he was lying. Like, when he said, I put I put ice on all you niggas. Like, when he said, I'm, I'm 90,000 in the hole. I, I put outfits on all y'all. Like, it, I don't believe he was lying, bro. I think that that was real. I, I don't think he needed to tell us all of that, but like. <laughs> but are those the are those the legit challenges? I, I, well, I shouldn't even say is it, but I guess those are the legit challenges of trying to mold and build an artist. I remember when Khalees was like, "Yo, fuck the Neptunes, they robbed all my shit," and from the other side of it, Neptunes are like, "Well, we paid for this, we wrote this, we put you in this, the music video costed this, wrote another record." Did this help you with this album? This album? This album? At what that's point? Just, it's kind of like both sides can be true to a sense, but what ends up being the more strong truth? But that's just the reality of the of the, of the music business in general. Like Yachty did take a lot of these kids off the streets, mm-hmm. and he paid their way for a lot of stuff, which of course puts him in the hole. He's 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 not acting any differently than what's probably been told or showed to him from from uh, sure. from Coach K. Yeah, yeah. Like they they've taught they've taught him all of these things. Like there's there's no doubt about it that. He's just doing what he what he learned from them. That's usually what label owners do, especially ones that are artists. I think what what was really the issue for me in all of this was, you know, not only just the cockiness of it, but like, I, I just like him said, you can't handle this in house. Like I'm like, do we need to know everything that goes on? I don't want to know that that you put caribou in them big ass pants, man, or camo <laughs> in them big ass pants. I didn't want to know that. But it's also heartbreaking to me that I'm just like you just can't get right, man. Like these, these, like these. This is a cool thing you guys had going. I might not have liked a lot of the stuff, but I liked the you know the look and what they were going for. Like they literally dressed like they was a 1994 hip hop crew, and there's not enough crews in rap anymore. And I and I think that you know bringing that back is 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 really dope. But again, ego from both sides. I think I feel like ego from both sides. Like we don't even really know why she left. Like, do you think she has anything after this? No, <laughs> like she flat out said on on their podcast on the uh, what's yeah you, the safe space pod when they had all the concrete boys. She said she only started rapping because she wanted to get famous. Like she didn't. It wasn't <laughs> even like she wanted to rap. Like she didn't have this core like dream. Like oh, I need to become a huge rapper. Like I, I don't think she was like his assistant or something. Like this yeah, is she, it. This uh, is it for her. She uh, what did she say on that one record? She was like, "Somebody tell Natalie help uh, let me help her produce baddies." That's what she wanted to do. She just want to produce TV, bro. <laughs> don't we all sometimes? She don't like, want to be on baddies. I don't think Caribou would last on baddies. That would be the quickest in and out of any cast member on baddies. And why not? Who's beating her ass? Anyone look like it could be her. Ass. Did she want to go head to head with Krishan's sister to to Seki? <laughs> you never she, know. You, you never you know. She your hands. Did you Krishan see? Krishan got doing? a sister on baddies. Yes, this, y'all don't know to say the the the. Can I can I pull up a? Can I pull oh up a God. video? Josh, Josh would be like, "Fuck no, don't turn. Do not go into the baddie sphere with me." Here we go. Here we go. Y'all ready? Oh my God! Come on. Here we go. So let let's let's that's fast Krishan. forward. Okay. Let's fast forward. Let's fast forward. That's her sister. Or yeah, that's her Wait, sister. Right the red or the blue? Nah, nah, none of that, none of that, none of that. I'm, I'm about to show you who she is. I'm about to show you who she is. I'm, I'm gonna keep the sound down. We don't want to get flagged here. Yeah, we're not. Gonna uh, do that. That's her right there. That's her right there. That's okay, her right blue. there. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, Taseki got the hands of God. The, the she beat up a girl so bad at the reunion of this season of she Bad. Cut her, she split her lip in half. Yeah, the girl said she shouldn't be allowed to fight. Period. <laughs> that's what that she said. I'm already looking a, at her stance. You look like I didn't know that was Chris sister. Yes, bro. Hold on. I, are they gonna? Okay, here we go. Here we go. That's that's oh more. Oh my right. god. Yeah. This, she brolic as hell. Come on, come on. Oh, look no. at look at the stance. Oh, no. Like, oh, no. Oh, 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 no. Look at her stance. <laughs> Hold on. This, she, please don't get dropped. Please don't get dropped. Please don't get dropped. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, come on. Oh, 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 what kind of teaser is that? They fucked up the teaser, bro. Hold on. Let me see. Let me see this teaser. Let's see. Taseki versus E.T. This another joint. It's 20, 20 second fights. That's really all a fight need to be is 20 seconds. Look at this shit, Mark. 
That's her right there. That's her right there. About to knock somebody. Not about to knock somebody out. Let's go. Let's go. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Hands, hands. Okay. Huh. Hold on. Nope. Huh. Weave. Ah. Nope. Ah. Ah. Who's connected? Oh. oh okay. I see. <laughs> you see? You see what I mean? You see what I mean? Come on, man. To second. I got that, bro. Hey. Caribou do not have those hands, bro. Oh, like, stop. Playing. This is just like when you said so you would choose Saweetie and make her a star. This is this is near it. This is veering very closely to and that. Who routine. has a hit with the greatest of all time, LL Cool J, right now? Where is it on Billboard? Where is it on the Billboard? Who got a hit? Where's Where's any rap on Billboard right now? Who got a hit with LL Cool J? Right got a hit with LL Cool J on Billboard. Oh my god! Hey man, it's toe tapper, bro. <laughs> oh, yeah. Why are niggas laughing, bro? Niggas are laughing, bro. This LL Cool J is a toe tapper. That's not a hit. That just Yo, shout out you like LL Cool J, man. Shout out, <laughs> shout out LL Cool J. I see the play. Just because you like it, don't mean it's a hit, bro. I'm not saying it's a hit. You know, you just said it was a hit. Sometimes it's even a little toe tapper. Mo, bro, Cam, did he not just say? You literally just just a hit. Said That's what made me ask, like, who got a hit on Billboard right now? <laughs> Hey man. These are your words. Just give it. Just go. give it a chance. Just give it a chance. All, all I'm saying. You, know I'm saying? you, are, you are such a liar, bro. <laughs> Tired of this shit. Listen, man. Days before radio re-released a couple of days ago. I'm gonna tell you right now. I haven't listened to it. I haven't. I haven't. I haven't gone back to it. Why not? Why? Why, why for? <laughs> Do you usually have your? Record, I, you if, have your couple records because Mama Sita and Don't Play has been out for. That's already years. out. I got yep. that on something else. Yep. If I don't listen to him right now, why well, am I going to listen to him when he was worse than he is right now? That's the biggest takeaway I think I took when I actually played it again. Like, <laughs> like, like, yo, like, it's actually the, better. <laughs> the first thing I played when I got my new car was I played Quintana Part Two in the car. Like, and he mm-hmm. was never rapping, saying shit, but then I listened to it, and I was like, yo, it was a rumor. I think it might have been confirmed, like that Tory Lanez wrote that song, like he was writing for him. And then when I listened to it, I'm like, "Yo, this shit sounds like a Tory Lanez song, bro." Like, and then I listened to the rest of the shit. I'm listening to Sloppy Toppy. I'm like, "Damn, this was my shit back in 2014." I'm like, "Yo, this nigga actually is worse than he is now. He he's barely passable now, like as a rap <laughs> as a you, rapper." Utopia Travis raps over over days before rodeo raps. 100%. The verse on the second verse on my eyes when the beat switches on Utopia, the best he ever rapped. I don't know who wrote that for him. I don't know. Like, <laughs> was, I don't know what happened in that particular. Like, I swear to God, bro, if, if he rapped like that on every song, he I would understand the hype connected to this to this man's music, bro. But like, I just don't see like Travis is weird, bro. Like, he can't rap worth a damn, but like the music sound good at the same time. <laughs> like, it's it's like, it's- it's Pavlovian, bro. It's something in your in your brain, in the yeah. receptors go off, and it's like you just ignore all of that shit. So I would rather, instead of just trying to lie to myself, just not listen to it at all. Why would I? Why? Part of, does that mean I'm part of the problem for being uh, part of this three hundred thousand? Because I bought that vinyl, bro. You're, you're not. Yeah, you're part of the problem for that shit. But <laughs> it is that you wouldn't be part of the problem if he wasn't the problem himself for that. And and of course, he had a very uh, the the big war. In the in the last couple of, I think you know, was was Carpenter versus Scott. What were your thoughts on Sabrina Carpenter versus Travis Scott? The the battle we never knew we fucking would ever have. Well, I still don't know my full. I still don't know my full thoughts on Sabrina Carpenter yet. I'm still kind of you know. There's a lot of pop in 2024 that either is a is a super hit, solid hit, and some that kind of falls by the wayside. I still don't know where I land on Sabrina Carpenter yet, but that's because I haven't played this album. I think Espresso was a cool record. I heard it millions of times throughout the year. I haven't uh, heard it. The first time I heard it was a week ago. The only thing that I really knew about Sabrina Carpenter was that tweet that was like, man, she be wearing them you who boys ass fits. And I was like, yeah, I can see that. She be wearing them 1920s Tom and Jerry ass fits, but they're cool. They're cool. She got the handkerchief. She got the handkerchief yep. on. You hear like four eleven, bro. Five. <laughs> they bargain this shit, yeah. <laughs> Those are the type of fits she wears. So that's the, that's the only thing that I knew. But music wise, you know, I spoke with espresso. I haven't. Uh, I don't think I've heard that. Please, 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 record in full yet. But I want to play. I want to play the album so I can at least know what's going on. But I did not expect this battle with Travis Scott. We've already seen him battle Nikki. 
when she was on his head for Queen and uh, Astro World at that time. Now you just got to see a little part two. You say you see his daily double like right as we're in this pod right now. They put out a tweet like days before second week. It's, it's projected to have the largest drop in Billboard history of all like, time. It's dropping ninety two percent. It's ninety two percent. Come on, man. <laughs> Not more vitals, bro. Like to to what end? To what end? You know what I'm saying? Like, obviously, you're getting your first your first week off of the vinyls and the, the special bonus versions and the bonus version of a bonus version or whatever, whatever. But like, to what end? And like, I, I think it just makes it just makes like it, it makes him look kind of thirsty. I think I like I I don't buy that shit. It makes him look super thirsty. I'm like, what? Why was this the week where you was like, I want to I want to go against Sabrina Carpenter and you still lost. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I don't get what what made that like that we and, and again like I'm I'm aware the industry's rigged. Okay, I know the industry's rigged. I know that w- it is what it is. I'm pretty sure Sabrina Carpenter's people was like, hell no! If you do this shit, she ain't doing no radio. She ain't doing no. Radio. Like, <laughs> oh, for sure. Pretty, I'm pretty sure that they did that. But I think just the idea that like I don't think that this made anything exciting in the like the, the overall real world. We remember Kanye versus Fifty. Everybody was talking about that. CNN was talking about that shit. You remember. Uh, just born sinner versus Jesus. Everybody was talking about that shit. Like that was like a big deal. It was like two heavy. And we don't even really have heavy hitters come out the same day no more. Like that. Like mm-hmm. people will literally move out the way. <laughs> so because that's how segmented and fragmented this audience is, where everyone listens to everyone. You know what I'm saying? And that's what that's that's to me like the biggest thing that I see with hip hop right now is that the audience is further segmented because now you've really set a line in the sand where if you listen to this group of artists, you cool. If you listen to this group of artists, you're not really that cool because they're not hot right now, and no one's listening to everybody. So you get an issue where if Travis had not done the bundles, he probably would have sold as much as Lotto did. And I don't think people would have wanted to have that conversation. I, don't, I think I think he might have been trying to avoid that conversation. And, and my thing, too, with Travis, but, like, what's the shame in that for a 10-year mixtape? Like, yep. there's no shame in doing 29K first week off a 10-year tape, bro. Like, it's not a new release. Like, yeah. I don't like. I understand if you want to sell some vinyls because, like, there's people like Mark, of course. Like, they want that piece of history to own it. Like, mm-hmm. there ain't nothing wrong with that. My thing was like, it gets to the J five thing. Like, what? When is enough enough? Like, why? What? What was getting a number one project <laughs> this week gonna do? Nothing. When, like, it was always gonna drop like this. And Sabrina yeah. Carpenter, we all knew. We were talking about it. We all knew. Her project is going to have sustainability after week one. It was going to do the 300 something K and it's going to do 100 something K for at least three more weeks, probably. Yeah. Like it's going to stabilize where we all knew the Travis thing was going to. People were going to want the vinyls and then after in the, the first merch. week in the, in the merch and then after the first week, we weren't going to nobody was really going to be that invested in it. Yeah. So my thing is, Travis, like you have to notice, like, what was the point? I want to know what what is what is getting a number one off of this or going this hard? Like, I don't know what. The end goal was like, I stunned on pop music. I'm the biggest rapper ever in a year where the biggest rapper ever is kind of humbled, and the other biggest rapper ever is back on hiatus again. <laughs> hiatus, yeah. and the two biggest. I think it really shows like there is a tier. It's the it's the, it's Kendrick and Drake, then it's Travis. And there's everybody kind of else under it, and you know you you have like. Again, no no fault in trying to make your your biggest project an uh, event because rap is very devoid of an event album this year. There is no event album. Like there like I guess if Cardi comes out that's somewhat of an event album as much, you know, re- regardless of how you feel about her music, that's an event cuz it's the first time in 7 years coming out. I thought you were talking about Playboy. Oh, I thought you said Cardi. <laughs> I thought you were talking about I'm about Cardi. To say Cardi, Cardi, Cardi B? But that's the thing. I also feel like with Cardi, Playboy Cardi, it's make or break. I, like it's it's got to do like it's got to do like to me it's got to do like two hundred in order for it for all of the hype to be justified. What did whole lot of red do? Like one hundred k flat? Yeah, like one. But it, it it surprise dropped on Christmas. <laughs> like yeah, like yeah. like it surprise dropped on Christmas Eve. You know what I'm it saying? Like, literally one hundred k flat, like one hundred k, right on a hundred. Twenty twenty four is a little bit different for Cardi right now. I mean, you got your big pop it? record. You got your big rap record. I, I think, think he's bigger. Than, he's bigger than he is than he was then. Now I think, or at least it, the 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 internet, the lore would lead you to believe that. Like, I'm I'm with J Five though. Like this is it, this is it for Cardi. Like, yeah. if he can't make if he can't do 170k, like at least like if he can't do what what did 
I don't think I don't think he needs to do we don't trust you numbers because I don't think he's gonna have a record as big as like that on there. But if he has to at least be able to to separate himself from the third tier type of guys, bro. Like yeah. I don't need you to do Drake Kendrick. J. Cole, I don't even need you to do the future. We don't trust you, Travis Scott, but you have to come right below that, bro. On the same accord, he's been around for a decade, too. I don't think we've, like, Thanks. actually recognized that he's been around for a very long time, too. Yep. And, you know, not to say that not to say that anyone has a specific time they need to blow up, but, like, he's not exactly, like, fresh. <laughs> if they, Like, he's not fresh. You know what I'm saying? He's not a new artist anymore. And, you know... I I I I love play with Cardi. Like I I think he's great. I think he's leapfrog his contemporaries in that same in that same class. Lil Uzi is not doing those numbers and not getting the attention that, that play with Cardi is. He had a chance last year. I think he fumbled it. I think what with 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 Cardi is it's different because there's an aura around him. You're right. Like, but he he hasn't put anything out. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like he hasn't put anything out, and it's hard to gauge what he's gonna do. Cardi B, like it's hard to gauge what she's gonna do too. You know what I'm saying? Regardless of how you feel about her music, that's going to be an event. Cardi and Carti are going to be an event. That's it. You know what I'm saying? Unless unless Drake and Kendrick put something out, we got three months left in the year, it could happen. But for right now, there's really nothing like event happening. So I, I, I figured Travis said, let's try to make something out of this. Let's try to make an event out of this. It's the biggest hip hop release. He beat Eminem this year. Eminem, who also had merch when he came out with his album. Like It just yep. shows that like, Travis still has the, the eyes and the ears of the 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 team market and they're only growing up with him you know what i mean like like, like you got to remember travis scott fans are a little bit younger than we were listening to drake so like they're maybe two years below us so they're still you know there's there's still some 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 legacy gap there but i i just i don't know man like i i look at this and i'm just like look at the billboards right now man look look at look at the you see their pop star list the i have the first century, century one the, yeah the- I see, I've seen the start of it. I haven't seen the whole thing. I saw Lil Wayne was uh, number twenty one under twenty five greatest pop stars of the twenty first century. Yeah, and and uh, and and Bruno, Bruno Mars is uh, is twentieth, I believe. Well, they had honorable, they had honorable mentions <clears throat> on here. There was a lot of rappers. <laughs> there were honorable yeah. mentions that I did not recognize. Like, would not make this list. Who was on there? Fifty was on honorable mention. 50. Nelly was honorable mention. Uh, Kendrick, Future, uh, Wiz has got to be in the twenty-five, right? Do- if we're Doja talking Cat. about pop, you rap. said who? Doja Cat is an honorable. Wait, you talking about You said Wiz. Yeah, there's zero chance he makes it. Top twenty-five pop as artists. Pop rap, as far as pop rap, but it's not pop rap. It's all. It's like they're pop putting stars. Pop, pop stars. So pop it's like stars? Wayne is top, Wayne is twenty-one. Bruno oh, Mars Wayne's is 21? Oh, yeah, never mind, never mind. Katy Perry was 25, I think, like right yeah. at the cutoff. And she was the biggest pop star on the planet at one point. Is like, Wayne our only rap representative? No. No, it's, you can basically tell, based off of Wayne being 21, Jay-Z is going to be on there, Drake, Kanye, Eminem, and maybe Nicki. The, uh, yeah. the first four, Nicki has to be because she wasn't mentioned in the honorable mention. So those yeah, would be the five, I would assume. Would let, me, be, let, me name it. Let, me, let me name it and just show you just how, how crazy it is. And this is 21st century. Cardi B is on this list. Chris Brown is on this list. Doja Cat's on this list. Future is on this list. We mentioned that. Uh, Kendrick Lamar is on this list. Uh, but it, this I, is honorable I, mention. This it's, is honorable it's mention. so weird that they mentioned the the uh, the only you like being famous part by being like. Uh, it's okay that he's not in the in the list because just like he sneered at Drake, only you like I'm like who said oh that God. Twitter or Billboard? Billboard said it in their in their list. Oh. Megan Megan Thee Stallion, which is impressive for her to get for her to get honorable mention, considering her output and how young she is, like as an artist still. Missy <laughs> Elliott, Nelly, uh Post Malone didn't make this list. <laughs> he's oh, Post ain't making the list, yeah. I ain't tripping by anybody else making it. SZA, did, like SZA didn't make the list, so it's got. It's, it's, if you think about our rappers of the 21st century, th- these are people that are that are battle tested, battle proven. And when you think about it, it's like, yo, these are the these are those top five rappers that will be on that list. Who's after them? And I'm just like, Kendrick's 15 years in, Future's 15 years in. I'm gonna automatically disqualify that. They they don't have that much longer left in terms of just like commercial vibe, like not viability, but commercial like. They're, gonna, they're not gonna make this fucking list in ten years, you know what I'm saying? Like that, this is yeah. this is it for them. I don't know. I don't. I don't know what's going to happen. I look at the I look at the Billboard top ten right now. I'm like, shit. 
it's Shibuzi, and he might as well be on this fucking list right now, nigga. Like Post Malone, Zach Bryan, and I'm like, am I looking at 1997, 1996 Billboard charts again? Am I looking at SoundScan and seeing these 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 types of names again? Like that gives me concern because we had the biggest event in rap history since Jay Z Nas, biggest, biggest. Not even Drake versus Kanye was as big. It happened. And there was nothing over the fucking, it was nothing over the ridge. It was nothing after that. Hmm. That's what bothers me. That's what concerns me about this culture that I love. Do you think people, that we're starting to get into a place where rap is not the dominant genre uh, as far as just Americana? Because I, I think the fact that we haven't had that happen yet is why I'm looking at it from a sense of, ah, nothing's going to change. We still run, we still, we being hip hop, still run the entire musical landscape as far as influence but i don't think that's really changed as of yet we're not it has this year it started last year you're starting to see if it is not drake if it is not future it is not kendrick nobody's it's not really selling. no one's even listening it looks like they're listening but no one's even really like like who's next hmm. who's next yeah I'm, I'm i'm getting to the point where i think we're we're there already i think there's some people don't necessarily want to accept it yeah or like but it's right there it's hard to ignore the evidence you look at the billboard hot 100 the entire top 10 is only one rap song it's not like us yeah. you look at the rap i mean album charts the billboard 200 the entire top five is post malone sabrina carpenter like taylor oh, swift yeah. like it's not it's n no hip-hop no black artists so I think, like, I think it's fair to ask what is on the other side of Drake yeah. versus Kendrick because you're starting to see. You're not even starting to see. We've seen it the whole summer. We've seen it now. We're entering the fall. People can't even let that go. Like they, yeah. they're still trying to. Drake's name is still being discussed, even if we all believe he lost or the public believes he lost. And he's over. It's done. And, he's, and he's done allegedly. Like they're still using his name for SEO and engagement and clicks. Mm -hmm because there is nothing else to talk about like or nothing else that people are genuinely interested in like who has dropped an album since that beef happened eminem dropped an album like he's a legacy act though like it doesn't it doesn't matter we're not really gauging we're not using eminem to gauge the pulse of hip-hop in 2024 he's not the needle mover he's not the needle but like future dropped two albums this year like are people still as excited about them today as they were back in in march and april I mean, one one of the future albums is carried by legit, probably going to be a Grammy award winning, Grammy nominated at the very least single. And yep. even to me, that's up in the air of like how prominent hip hop is going to be when that when the awards come around <laughs> this year. That's a bunch of songs I think are going to overtake like bar song to me look like it's going to be it. Espresso look like it's going to be it. Birds of a Feather yeah. going to be it. Uh, I had some help look like it's going to be it. It might what not be announced. Let me go look look at those. Uh, the cutoff date was for the, for submission was like last week. I think they get announced in November. Yeah, the awards to be announced Friday, November 8th. Yep. Yeah. yeah. The awards will be Sunday, February 2nd. So yeah, I think there's I think there's a lot of time to do that. I do as far as albums that I have to listen to, you've tapped into the Shibuzi, right? Five. How have you? How have you like a black the black country artist in that sense? I, he it don't feel like country to me. It's, he's interesting because it feel like he's doing the post Malone in reverse, and, and doing a post like, on post. <laughs> like, he looks like he's doing it in reverse, and, and what I mean by that is that like he is essentially kind of like doing the the, the country first and the rapping second. And I will honestly feel I honestly say like I I think I like the the um. I think I like the rapping less than the country stuff that he does. Like he does like rapping stuff. And I actually don't, I don't think it's that good because it feels very derivative of other stuff. Like I've actually felt like if I were to do the post shit, I think I like post the rapper better than I like post the, you know, country singer. Yeah. But I, I thought Shibuzi was cool. Like, like I, and, and again, like, is, is he next? <laughs> is, is that what we need to be looking at is next? I mean, he, he's he's probably one of the most prominent black artists on the chart right now. You know what I, I mean? I was fully okay with it once I realized Jaquan was getting paid. I was like, Jaquan's getting paid for a sample? Cool. I'm good. Thanks. Yeah, All yeah. I obviously he's getting paid. Obviously he's getting paid. Shout out to St. Louis. But, you know, I, I, I just wonder, like, what's, what's after this? And 
it's becoming too much to ignore that like Travis Scott had to do like this kind of big rigmarole to beat Sabrina Carpenter, who's been around for a decade at this point. I didn't even know that shit, but she's been around for a decade and she's got undoubtedly a bigger a bigger project. And I like I said, I know that a lot of this is, is politics and things like that, but you see a ninety two percent drop and you're like, okay, well, you look at your you look at your fucking watch and say, What's next? We're 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 in a drought again. Well, Pluto's coming out, mixtape Pluto. Do we think that's gonna be on the top ten for four weeks, five weeks, Cam? It's hard to gauge, bro. Like, so the thing you have to worry about when it comes to this future project, if you're talking, if we're strictly talking about commercial viability. It's the third project in a year. Yeah. There's going, there, there were diminishing returns already. With we still don't trust you. From we don't trust you did what two seventy five first week, and then yeah. we don't trust you did one twenty five. Yeah, they were two weeks apart. Like, is there an appetite on a large scale beyond just us? We we all want to hear mixtape Pluto. Like, we're all future fans, but like, is it gonna land? Like, is there gonna be another record on there as big as like that? Is there and, gonna if, be a and he's not going to diss anyone. There's not going to, and mm-hmm. that's fine. I think it's fine, but I think there's definitely something there when you talk about diminishing returns. Like, yeah. what is going to be the next thing? And, so, and it can't just be diss records. And, and, I'm, and I say that for Kendrick and Drake. It can't just be diss records. No. Y'all did that shit already. That, that ship is sailed. I feel like there's too many people who are parasocial enough that they have made this beef their whole personality and their whole character. And it's sad because, like, I remember living through Jay and Nas, and I bring this up again. I brought it up in May. Like, People made this their character for years. The only difference was is that Wayne was around the corner. Jeezy was around the corner. The South was starting to pick up, to Mark's point, 02, 03. There were a lot of exciting things on the horizon that kind of took your mind off of that. I think what's happening here is we have a we have a we have a lack of we have a lack of being able to put our attention in anything else right now, other than that, other than this beef. And I think that's why, to your point, they're still talking about it. There's nothing more to call. There is people who wake up in the morning reciting lines from these fucking songs. And I'm like, that, that, that lets you know there ain't nothing else out there. Don't forget, it's football season, so we're going to march the band up and start playing. <laughs> uh, 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 what's this? 616 in LA. They're going to put it on the bands. I'm just like, we passed that. We passed that point. Congrats. If that's, we, if that's what y'all think, congrats. We've milked that one week. For four months now, it was a it oh, was a week in, in May. But it made. Did, did you think there was nothing exciting happening in rap before that happened, though? No, I mean I was excited for we don't trust you, and I thought, like I think that really did change the entire outlook of what was coming. But even still, what was coming on the other side of it, it still was older guys. Like I think J Cole's album would have been out by now, or we would have at least yeah. a concrete date yeah. if it was if it weren't for that 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 beef and situation. Now, like, I don't want to say his career is over, but it's clear. Like, remember last year and the year before, like two years when J. Cole jumped on somebody else's track, it would go viral on online. Yeah. He's on the ASAP Rock. All my, life, all my life was last year. <laughs> yeah. First person shooter was last year. Yeah. Like the secret recipe with Yachty was last year. Like now he's on a, a, a ASAP Rocky album, a single last night, and nobody cares. Yeah. Like it, it hasn't generated any buzz. Like, I do think that that beef has like zapped the energy out of everything else or sucked the wind out of everything else in hip hop right now. I don't know what the And and my thing is this to anyone that like would refute that like okay tell me what you're excited about then. <laughs> tell me what you're listening to right now then. Like tell me what what new is coming up that you're that, that doesn't have to do with any of the participants that you're excited about because everything is in that orbit. You know what I'm saying? Like everything's in that in that orbit and I feel like if you say any of that to anyone they're like quick to like kind of label you as is taking a side i have remained <laughs> uh i've remained uh in my in my opinion about this whole thing and i called it from may this is not a good idea this this seems it seems bad you were saying it before May. you've been saying I, it for like a year two years now like literally like mark check the fucking tapes Check the tapes. I said this a year ago, two years ago, when I was in my old place. I said, I don't think this is good for the marketplace. Yeah. I, don't, I think it's going to be, I, I think that their fans, they have their, their fan bases are too similar. And, and, I'm, and scrolling I, through my, I'm scrolling through my albums right now just to see from an album perspective, what albums have I really liked as of recent? Obviously, 
I still have a long queue of albums to listen to. The it one ain't right. That, well, I did like the Dochi. The Dochi was actually real good. But again, we're 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 we're, we're talking about at, major. We talking about major projects. Exactly. We're talking about things we want to get high high on billboard unfortunately i don't think dochi is going to be the one that ends up you know representing on top 10 for weeks or so so that is where our struggle comes as far as hip-hop being able to dominate the way that it should be uh on billboard but i think we're still gonna be waiting for that album for a little while we'll see uh are we are we in b-sides yet uh let's sign off let's 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 sign off and let everybody know where where um where they can listen to us especially for the black print for these next couple weeks yeah for sure uh black print uh, obviously, we got B sides coming for everybody that signed on to Patreon. Mm-hmm. Uh, checks out B sides will be out a little bit later this week. I know we're kind of off. We're gonna get back on our schedule. Trust me. Uh, we also have Throwback coming the tour. Um, and yeah, you check us out on YouTube, man. A lot of people fuck with us on YouTube. I, I keep getting like uh, s- like certificates and shit from YouTube in my email. They say, <laughs> "Oh, y'all up there, you got ten thousand likes or some shit like that." Well, check us out on YouTube. You can see us visibly. Uh, B-Sides, we're going to give you guys an update on the on the, on the the studio. Um, and we're going to talk about some other stuff on B-Sides. So uh, make sure you check us out, check us out, tap in, and uh, follow us uh, on the black print everywhere where you can, you can, you can do that shit at. So for Cam, who's going to, he's going to be on B-Sides too. And for uh, MC, I'm J5. We'll see you guys uh, in a couple days. Peace.